morning. From the floor of the CME, this is Chris Robinson with your Traders exclusive comment today here Wednesday the 18th. What are we looking at? Well, we're going to start with the action in the grains. The funds continue to get longer. Uh, they bought another 10,000 contracts of beans and corn yesterday. They've now got a long position in soybeans, about 200,000 contracts. They are building a bigger long position in corn now, probably around 75,000 to 80,000 contracts. Why are they doing that? Well, they've been long beans for the really most of the rally, the $2.30 rally, which took us from uh, you know, 950 to where we are right now, uh, to your highs. The market I want to talk about most right now is corn. If you look at what's happening in corn, the new crop that's coming out is in December. That's the crop that's going to be planted, it's being planted now that will be harvested in our, uh, October, November uh, in the fall. Those prices, if you look at a continuation chart, they've had a lot of resistance at the $4 level. Only five times in the last six months has December corn been able to settle above $4. So we're right there right now. Uh, it's going to give you an opportunity. If you're bull and you think we're going to extend higher because you think we're going to have a rally uh, because of a, a drought this summer, uh, you know, you, you want to be buying it against that $4 level. However, if you're a bear, you know, the fact that we have had trouble staying above this $4 level consistently, you know, maybe an area where you want to try and fade the market. So it's giving you a good opportunity. At the end of the day, I talk about that a lot. These technical areas are just areas to help you decide whether or not you want to be a bull or a bear. Uh, but look at that chart. I can't stress that enough. We're at a, a kind of a turning point here. The funds continue to get long. There's no real fundamental reason that we should be rallying like we are, other than the fact that people are trying to get in front of a potential La Nina drought. Um, real quickly, I want to talk about uh, the two wheats. We've got Chicago wheat and KC wheat. If you look at a continuation chart of KC wheat, which is the hard red wheat that's got a higher protein in it, it's at 10-year lows. We're within 25 cents of, uh, if, if we take out the recent lows, you know, we're, we're opening ourselves up for another move lower. Compare and contrast that. If you go back and look at where we were in 2012, we had Kansas City wheat at $9.50. Here we are at $4.50, flirting with taking that out. Um, even as corn and wheat rally, the funds continue to sell, excuse me, even as corn and beans continue to rally, the funds continue to sell the wheat. That's a spread that you want to look at for opportunity. Now, at some point, um, the wheat will get oversold and we will have a correction back. The problem is we haven't had a correction of more than about 50 or 60 cents in a long time. So just when we start to get a correction, some uh, people step in and try and get long and then they the, the longer term downward trend in wheat continues to hang over. There's nothing really fundamentally bullish for wheat. There's plenty of supply. The U.S. dollar, it makes our wheat the most expensive wheat in the world. And thirdly, even though farmers planted less wheat this winter, we're actually going to have 50 million more bushels than we did last year. So we've got this oversupply of wheat. Uh, put it all together, it's giving you opportunities to uh, look at those spreads. And uh, moving forward, I think over the next six weeks, that's probably what the market's going to be looking at. It's going to be looking at money flow and the spreads between corn, wheat, and beans. This is Chris Robinson. If you're looking for help with your hedging or your trading, look me up on the web.